Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim, and I am trying to use a recording app I just uh, downloaded to see if I can record videos again. I was having trouble with my other laptop. I, I don't know if it was just old or if it was a little too much for it. Uh, I'm not very good with Linux anyway, so this is a Windows laptop. It's brand new. It seems to be working really well, so... Uh, basically, I wanted to do an easy video to start things off, and it won't be long. I'm just showing you the basics. This is obviously Orox. Everybody has seen this because I share the chart charts every single day from this app or from this website. And uh, it's a great website, guys. I recommend it over TradingView simply because I've been working with the guys, and they're they're really hard workers. They deserve credit, and they deserve uh, accolades for the hard work they've done for the site because the site is really useful, guys. It's got indicators that TradingView doesn't have readily available. Now, there's people that create their own indicators on TradingView, and it's totally possible to make indicators that are similar, but this is a... Uh, the indicators on here that I really am a fan on is the Orox indicator. I don't really use it strictly for trading. I use it to second guess myself. Like, uh, let's say I'm really confident about something. If I throw that Oryx indicator and it's saying, hey, it's a sell, and I think it should be a buy, that'll at least have me to lead me to question it and look at things over, you know? And that's what it's all about, guys, is trying to catch your mistakes before they happen. And that's why I'm a fan of the Oryx indicator. And I'll show you how to put all of them on the chart. Now, right now, all we have on this chart are the candles. That's it. This is a most basic chart. Now, from a uh, from a trading standpoint, you can get a lot from this. Okay, I'm going to show you a few things, like this horizontal ray. It'll draw a perfectly straight line. So, look, we have some support. It looks like right about here, right? Okay, because, look, we bounced here, here, and there. So, if there were a drop, we may bounce off of that, guys, because there has been support in the past. Even that week below, it doesn't frightened me very much it happens you know what i mean it looked like a fake out because we rose after the drop uh that signified that would have been a great place to buy because look we went up right afterwards and that kind of a uh, that's kind of a doji right there it's kind of a the opposite of a, a shooting star i guess which is a bullish doji actually because it's the bottom of a downtrend really even though it's only one or two candles you could tell that the bulls fought back really hard when it got to this level so uh I, I'm, I shouldn't get into too much ta today i'm just trying to show you guys the way i set my chart up i want you guys to do be able to understand that and uh okay so like the horizontal ray i'll, I'll sometimes i'll throw it on here where i see support and resistance and that helps me like right here, I believe there's some too. I mean, we've had a uh, we had a couple of ricochets right here, not and then a couple right here as well. We finally broke through here, so you know what I mean. You could sit here and you don't need all the indicators necessarily on a chart just to be able to read it. If once you get to that point where you've been doing this a while, you start to recognize support and resistance without needing all that. But I enjoy using them. I, I Every trader is different. So I'm going to show you guys how I put them on the chart. Now, step one, you need to come up here to your indicator section and click on that. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, so we have basic indicators right here. That's what I'm going to start with, guys. All right, Bollinger Bands. That's one of the first ones I'm going to put on because that's in the alphabetical order. So I'm going to click Bollinger Bands. Now, I have Bollinger Bands around the candles. I'm going to change them up a little bit because I like them to be a little darker and you could, where you can see them a little better. Not darker, but a little more vibrant so you can see them a little better. But let's go ahead and go down a little bit more and add the rest of the indicators. And I'll show you what, I, what how... You could do a, you could do it anyway. You could stop now and adjust that Bollinger band, or you can put them all on all of the indicators you're going to use. For instance, the Ichimoku cloud. That is the cloud you see on my chart every day. I always have the cloud on. That was one of the first indicators I learned to use, and it's one of my favorite indicators. Now you have all these different MAs: MA cross, MA with EMA cross, blah blah blah. 
But I like to go just with the strictly the basic moving average. And, uh, you know, I put two on there because right now they both say they're nine day. You can see it right here. But I'm going to change this one to 50 and this one to 200. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And, uh, you know, there's MACD. MACD is not a bad indicator. Uh, relative strength index. There it is right there. Okay, that's that's down here, and that's also useful as well. I'm going. Oh, I don't want that on there though. Here, I'm gonna leave it on there, and then I'm gonna uh, take it off in just a second. Okay. Um, there's volume. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on there. It's just a basic. Uh, it just shows you, uh, you know, basic surges in volume and stuff like that. It's not totally helpful in trading as much as people would hope it would be. But I do enjoy having it on the chart, you know. Okay, so let's go to advanced indicators now because that's the last one. They have all these special indicators. Now I'm going to go with Orox indicator and it puts the little arrows below and above the candles. And uh, that's the reason why I like it. It kind of uh, tells me, hey, it's a good time to buy here. And if I'm saying, hey, I, you know what I mean? I'd use my TA and their buy and sell indicators to try to be a better person at the charts, I guess, or better ta person or whatever you want to call them but uh anyways uh that is how basically how you get all of this stuff on the chart guys i'm going to exit off of that one i don't like that indicator okay now let's go ahead and uh, adjust this okay you see this ma9 that's a nine day moving average is what they're saying and uh, that's not what i want nine day moving average might be pretty common amongst like stocks but for me I, I, I like the longer term MAs. I think that they're more significant in my opinion, and especially in crypto. So I'm going to go ahead and click on, you can see that says show or hide. That's an eyeball. Now the settings are the next one. It's kind of like a, a, a gear. Now click on the gear. Now you can come over here and change the color, but since it's orange, I'm going to leave it there. Well, let me see. I, I could probably pick a better orange. That one right there. And I'm going to do a the line a little thicker you can see what i just did down here and this is all a matter of preference guys like i said you don't have to do any of that but uh that's what i like to do and then you come over here to inputs i'm gonna put 50 and press ok now you'll see that line right there with the dots on it that's the new indicator i just changed from the nine day which a nine day really hugs the candles because it's a shorter moving average the shorter it is the more likely it's going to follow the candles that's why the 50 ma follows the candles better than the 200 ma because it takes the 200 ma a lot longer to change course it's like a big ship versus a small ship small ship can turn really quick which is the 50 ma versus a big ship which has to take an hour to turn which is the 200 MA, which speaking of 200 MA, I'm going to put 200 right there. Go to style. I'm going to pick a different blue. I'm going to pick this one. I like that one. It's pretty. There we go. Sometimes this laptop doesn't seem like it wants to click. Okay, so there's your new 200 MA down here. So that's how you change the settings, guys. You can make those any color you want, but I've always made orange and blue my colors because I'm so consistent with it. And everybody that reads my TA any amount of time should realize that the orange is the 50 MA and the blue is the 200 MA. And if you have any questions, what you could do is come over here and the, the numbers are orange, right, for the 50 MA. That indicates that the orange line is the orange numbers the blue line is the blue numbers see it's pretty smart trading view or not trading view i'm sorry aurox has a lot of cool features like that but uh anyways that's basically how you put on all the indicators that i use every day and the bollinger bands I, that's also something i wanted to change i go to the cogwheel or the uh the gear all right, so you can leave these the color they are if you want. <clears throat> we can go to uh, the, the background. See, if I make it white, you can kind of see it better. Now, you could, the opacity is where you, stuff starts to see. I'm going to make it just about that. That way, I can still see the candles very well. 
but I can also see where the Bollinger band is too, because it's not easy to see otherwise. You see how thin it got? Look how thin it gets. And then bam, it all of a sudden it blows up. And that's the way the Bollinger bands work. It doesn't it, it could be thin to here and then it blow up or blow down even. But it lasted a while here. I mean it lasted almost a week here. And then we blew up finally. Another consolidation period between these two lines and you can see the Bollinger Bands got real tight again and then bam and now we're ending up uh, a little volatile up here but you can tell the Bollinger Bands squeeze pretty tight here and that's when we busted out here uh, the Bollinger Bands can't really tell you which way we're going to break out but they're useful in predicting when a breakout's coming just not which direction so it's good and bad you know what i mean it's good that it could tell you hey there's something's about to happen what i suggest whenever you see the bollinger band squeezing prepare for a drop so set your stop loss you know you may set it back here down here or wherever wherever you feel safe i'm not telling you where to set it i'm just saying below support and it looks like the 50 ma support right now so i would set it just below that if we lose the 50 ma at this point we're probably going to drop a little bit so i would uh that's where i would have my stop loss drop bam it's trips so i'm out and uh but instead if my stop loss doesn't trip i stay in the trade and then i end up up here move my stop loss back down to where below support and play that game again and look i mean i could have got stopped out here i probably did get stopped out here i mean i've been stopped out a few times during this bull run but that's fine i'll buy back in at a good opportunity you know and that's the way I've always traded, guys. Uh, you win some, you lose some, but I always make sure I maximize my profits while minimizing my risk and loss. And it's not that hard, guys. You just got to use a little common sense. But uh, like I said, we got the Bollinger Bands brighter. There's all sorts of settings on here you can learn to use, guys. I suggest getting on here and playing with it for hours, and that will get you halfway there, you know. Uh, this is not uh, trading isn't easy. You're learning how to read a chart and uh, that's really should be done separately from trading. That's what I did. OK, so like now you could uh, come on here and let's so I'll just show you how to do a fib real quick since I'm here and I'm almost done with the video, guys. But look, you come up, click at the bottom of the, uh, you know, before the uh, uptrend start right here and up to about there there we go all right so you can see that it actually did work because look this green line is right where this yellow line i had on there was which was support and look i mean right here this blue line acted as support and resistance when you lay a fib right you should know it look we bounced off of here and this fib is right because there's tons of instances where we have dropped and raised now once we break above it things might change a little bit but uh that's where uh you know you can get into uh trend-based fibs and actually see where the next fib line is and stuff like that and i'll have to make another video for that because uh, this one's already going a little longer than i hope but uh all these indicators are what i use guys and uh, every day that you see me on the charts that's how i find them so if you have any questions or uh issues you know drop a comment in the comment section of this video and we will address it but uh this is pretty basic stuff i just wanted to cover it because uh I want to make sure everybody knows exactly what's going on. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. And I'll make another video. Maybe today. Uh, I'm trying to make a little more content. I haven't been able to do it with my other laptop. But since I got this new one, I just got this new app. I'm just going to give it a try out and see what happens. Uh, have a good one, guys.